Hi, this is Shu Yang Wu here. Uh, share share you how do we test Apache API six resilience with Chaos Mesh. Uh, first let me introduce myself a bit. Uh, right now I'm interning at API seven, the commercial company behind API six, and luckily I'm the committer of both Apache API six and Chaos Mesh community. Uh, through two different separate open source community for students last year. Yeah, I'm lucky to become the com com committer of two community. And next month, I'll enroll in Georgia Tech to continue my master study. And today, I'll, oh, and if you are interested, you could follow me on GitHub. My ID is emo. So, uh, today I will share you uh, first a little bit about API 6 itself and then uh, why do we API 6 need Chaos Engineering? And then what is Chaos Engineering and why do we choose Chaos Mesh? Uh, after that, I'll talk about how do we integrate Chaos Mesh into API 6 for some details. And finally, I'll show you a simple deep demo about how do we do that. So first about API 6. Uh, I guess you've already heard about it, but I'll still give it some introduction. So API 6 is an API gateway, which is actually a real gateway between the outside traffic and your own services, as shown in the left part of the graph. Uh, thanks to OpenRST, API 6 could dynamically update uh, configurations compared to Nginx. And uh, API 6, we also use ETCD as a default configuration center. And thanks to ETCD, we could update our config new configuration in milliseconds. Also, as you see on the graph, there are quite a lot of different functions of API 6, say rate limiting authentication, security logging, or on the right side, the observability. Uh, to achieve all those functions, we support quite a lot of plugins until now. We've already supported 50 plus plugins. So that's quite a large system. And then why do we need Chaos Engineering? Uh, first, it's an bug raised from our users in the community. It says, uh, if you build a three node ETCD cluster, if one node goes down, uh, API 6 could, could go wrong, but uh, one node goes down, there are two, there are still two healthy nodes in the ETCD cluster, so the cluster itself is healthy. Uh, so, of course, it's not expected. And although we have uh, quite a lot of different tests and we spent a lot of time on it, like we have uh, unit tests, E2E tests, and fuzzing tests for API 6 itself, uh, but we still could not cover situations like that. So yeah, we need to find a way to do that. Uh, and also uh, in this area of microservices, uh, for each service there are, uh, for each product, there are thousands of services around there. So we could say even for some major tech companies like Google or Amazon, they could still face those um, outages. Like when one part goes wrong, the whole system would directly goes down. Uh, and yeah, so we need to use Chaos Engineering to save us. Then what is Chaos Engineering? Uh, in the principles of Chaos Engineering, like it's kind of like the Bible in this area. It says, Chaos Engineering is a discipline of 
experimenting on a system in order to build confidence in the system's capability to withstand turbulent conditions in production. Or I could say chaos engineering is to help us uh, find those vulnerability in the system in advance before the user actually made it, met them. Uh, for example, we could try to test the system with uh, some network uh, problems or like a random pod goes down, something like that. And the graph below also from principle of chaos engineering shows five common steps of the chaos engineering. The first one is you need to find a steady state which means you need to figure out what the system should be like. And then you need to make the hypothesis. You uh, would figure out after important variable, in, after import a variable, uh, what the system gonna be like. Then you need to design the test and actually run the test. After that, you will verify if your hypothesis is correct. And at this time, if the system goes wrong, you need to fix it and then go this loop again and again until, no, not until, but to make the system more and more robust. Um, the phrase chaos engineering is raised from Netflix, the streaming platform. And it's the, uh, the first time is in 2010 uh, which they use chaos engineering to kill, to randomly kill pod in their system in order to, so that the system could withdraw that effect. Uh, and after that, at 2012, they um, open source it and they made chaos monkey. So it has the same function like to random kill pod. It's pretty useful. But uh, after like this 10 years development, it more and more chaos engineering tools coming out and we got more and more functions. Mm, and also thanks to Kubernetes, which help us to uh, precisely control the explosion radius so it won't destroy your system, your whole systems. And so, yeah, there are quite a lot of uh, chaos engineering tools like showing the right graph, but why do we choose chaos mesh? First, of course, it supports and only supports Kubernetes. So it's, uh, if you use it on Kubernetes, it could be very elegant. Uh, second, it supports uh, most chaos types of all of the chaos tools. So if you want to find one, you could directly, or you, you could directly use chaos mesh. And last but not the least, as an open source community, we know that only an active community can ensure the, uh, the project's future. And so, uh, as you see on the right graph, uh, the gr the green one is Chaos Mesh. As we could see, it developed very rapidly. So we believe uh, Chaos Mesh could help us do the work. Mm. After talking about Chaos Mesh, uh, I'll show you how do we really integrate Chaos Mesh into API 6. So there are basically three steps. Uh, first, as I mentioned before, users uh, raised bug report in the community. So the first step is of course to uh, fix it. Now we need to locate and reproduce uh, the bug with Chaos Mesh. If you are familiar with Chaos Engineering, it's uh, quite a simple scenario that you randomly kill a uh, ATCD pod in the cluster and to see how the system behave. 
uh, and, uh, as shown in the left graph. So uh, we could measure the systems behaving three different um, aspects. First is uh, is APS6DP data plane uh, works as expect, like the routes could still go through DP without effects. Uh, also, uh, since APS6 provide quite a lot of Prometheus metrics, we could use those metrics to see uh, if something goes wrong. Also, uh, uh, there are engine log to show uh, if there are some unexpected error happens, or if the error is gracefully to enough to show what exactly goes wrong. And since it's a bug and we we don't want to say it again, we need to solidate it. Uh, we need to write it in the test cases so we could run that in CI to ensure it won't happen again. And thanks to Chaos Mesh CRD, uh, we could write, uh, we could create Chaos uh, quite elegant in the Chaos pipeline, uh, test pipeline without create a bunch of YAMLs. Yeah, I love that quite a lot. Uh, after fix those bugs, uh, as I talked before, APSX got 50 plus of plugins, and most of which are uh, combined with some external components. As shown in the left graph, uh, like we take use of like Skywalking, Prometheus, OpenID, Kafka, Reddit, and Redis, and some more. So, we need to make sure if one of those external components goes wrong, EPSX would continue to do its job or at least to uh, pr elegantly present the specific error. So uh, at this steps, uh, we usually take three different kind of chaos into the scenario. The first one is the pod fault which means uh, you kill, you randomly kill pod or kill the containers in the pod to see anything goes wrong. And secondly is a network attack, which means uh, you could add network delay or to create some package loss or even network partition if you are using database or message queue. Mm -hmm. And last, we would normally take some stress test. So it could stress out your CPU or memory or disk to see how the system behave. And that's quite helpful. So after we take good care of all those plugins, uh, we, and right now also, we goes to integrate Chaos Engineering with our E2E test. Uh, since for us, it's hard to create some real enough uh, production environment. Uh, there are good side and bad side. The good side is we won't worry about the explosion radius anymore since we test it in CI. Um, yeah. It cannot hurt us if something goes wrong. But also, uh, without production environment, we fail to enjoy the com complexity, complexity of the production environment. So um, maybe there were more potential problem that we cannot find. So to uh, simulate production environment, we will We'll try to integrate it with E2E test to cover as much uh, scenarios as possible. And that is what we are doing right now. Also, we are trying to uh, add this chaos test to our, our APS 6 dashboard and also APS 6 ingress controller. And yeah, that's the three steps 
uh, how we integrate Chaos Mesh into API 6. Uh, and right now it's, I'll show you a simple demo about the, how, how do we apply Chaos Engineering into our systems. Uh, as I said before, there are five steps uh, that we should follow. You need to find a steady state, make the hypothesis, do the experiment, verify the hypothesis, and then improve the system. So I'll show you the uh, how do we achieve it. Let's turn to terminal. Yep. Here you are. Uh, so uh, first we need to find the steady state and um, for API 6 for API gateway is uh, could be divided to three parts. Uh, first <clears throat> we need to see if you could configure the system. Uh, like here, I add a root, which URI is good. We add the Prometheus plugin to export our Prometheus metrics and also add an upstream, which uh, point our HTTP upstream. Uh, I need to show you the, what do we have right now. I deployed everything in Kubernetes, so uh, it's a bit slow since I deployed on GKE, but yeah, here it is. Uh, there is one node API 6 and three nodes XCD cluster. Also, I deployed uh, HTTP ping as the upstream. I'll also show you like the services of them. And also, uh, here is the components of Chaos Mesh. Uh, I won't go into details of it, but yeah. So yeah. this is how we set root and we could do the set right now. Yep, it succeeds. And after that, we could try to access the root. Yeah, that's um, like the most important part of the system. You need to uh, do the routing and configure the routing. Also, uh, there are Prometheus metrics we could make use of like, to see uh, if the request per second uh, is changing after a chaos goes in. And also the engine locks lock to see if they're uh, some error happens. So uh, let me see. First, I'll show you like how do we add network delay to the system. Yep, this is a um, network tails which add delay. Uh, as you can see, we add a delay of one hundred milliseconds to all ETCD nodes. So I'll give it a try. And yep. So right now we if we do the set we could find it'll be slow right now, right? Uh, we could test the time of it. So it would be like one second around to set one route. And also we can test the access route. And it's pretty fast, it would only take 0.3 second and we could uh, remove it remove 
remove the network delay to say if we do not add the delay, what goes around. Okay, so we press access route. It's still 0 0.3 seconds. So after we add the delay, nothing happens when we access the route. So the gateway itself is the routing and the processing is works as uh, works as not changed. Uh, but if we test, we set route, it only take less than 0 0.2 seconds. So it adds one second delay to the settings, to the configuration settings. And that is expected. Uh, at this step, we also need to check Prometheus metrics, which is a uh, better measurement of how 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 delay it adds, but unfortunately, I failed to configure it out in this new laptop. Uh, so, if you are interested, you could check the CI about how we add it. And that's about delay. Right now, we also have kill each city, which kill all. ECD pods in the cluster. Uh, we uh, think I deploy uh, API 6 and also ECD with Helm. So Helm provide the high accessibility of ECD. So if we only kill one ECD pod, the cluster is still healthy. So nothing will happen. So we won't test that. But we will test if all ECD goes down, what would happen? But still, we need to check things goes wrong here. So set root will take zero point two second and set root will take zero point three second. Uh, yeah, it's a bit slow since I use HTTP Pi and also it's uh, deployed on GKE but not on the local deployment. But uh, we we could only care about the comparison before and after the chaos. So I now I'll add the you need to say the chaos. Okay, so we could check. Uh, ECD goes down as expected, and Helm is recreating it. So we could check if setting root still works. Uh, we expect it to not work since ECD goes down. It cannot write data into it. Uh, yeah, apparently it's not. I will check it later. We could check the uh, we access could still access the root. Yep, still we could still do that in the same delay, like zero point three seconds. Let me check if we could set root for now. Oh, it's connection refuse and CTCD is still going down. So. Do not recover. Mm, let's delete this class. Cool. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's the demo. And let me go back to the slides. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for the listening and I'm happy to answer any questions.